I was not prepared to make a video tonight. I was out at a concert. I was I had knew that there were talks about Kristaps Porzingis being traded to the Boston Celtics. Uh, that I saw that before I left. I was at the venue watching the opening band when I got the alert that the trade was off because of concerns that the Clippers had about Malcolm Brogdon and his lingering injury issues. And I thought, you know, oh well, oh, oh darn, that's that. What a what a what a bummer for all teams involved. The Wizards, Celtics, Clippers, three team trade can't happen. Ah, you hate to see it. Let me tell you, I about fell out of my chair when I got the Shams notification a little bit later on that not only did the Celtics and the Wizards continue their trade talks centered around Kristaps Porzingis, but the Memphis Grizzlies got involved, and the result, Kristaps Porzingis goes to Boston, Tyus Jones from the Grizzlies go to, goes to the Washington Wizards, and Marcus Smart is heading to Memphis. What better way to replace Dylan Brooks than with Marcus Smart? Like, this is unbelievable. I My jaw about hit the floor. And that's not to say that I thought that Marcus Smart was some, like, untouchable member of the Boston Celtics, but I was shocked. Like, it it really felt like he was the the heart and soul of the team. I think multiple players have said that multiple times. I have a few Celtics fan friends in my life that were, for lack of a better word, like almost borderline like devastated. Like like multiple people were texting me like I'm speechless right now. I can't believe this, and and it's hard to quantify. I think because like for the Wizards, it's clear. So here are all the trade details. The Wizards received Tyus Jones and a 2023 second that they will use this week Thursday. Uh, tomorrow, I'm recording this Wednesday night, they will be using it tomorrow in the NBA draft. The Grizzlies receive Marcus Smart, and the Celtics get Kristaps Porzingis, a 2023 first, and a 2024 first. The 23 first tomorrow is the 25th overall pick. So, we'll go team by team. I'm going to try to go quick, but we're going to go team by team. The Wizards... They are in full teardown mode. They just traded Bradley Beal for a bunch of second round picks. Continues on. They get a 2023 second round pick that they can use to get a cheap rookie player that they can see what they got, go with that, and just kind of, cool. We It either pans out or it doesn't. No harm, no foul. Tyus Jones uh, is one of the best backups in the league. And when I saw he was going to Washington, that was probably the moment that I knew something was going to be like major coming out of this because Memphis doesn't have John Morant for the first 25 games next season. And Tyus Jones is arguably the best backup point guard in the league. Like when he slides in to cover for jaw, when jaw is out with injuries or, or extracurriculars, the Grizzlies kind of don't miss a beat and they're almost like a tad more efficient all around scoring defensively. They run a little bit smoother with Tyus Jones running the show and that is feels weird to say but it's true so Washington getting him is is a good asset for them hoping that they trade him because he is too good for what that team is going to need to be doing this uh, this upcoming season they need to lose games they need to develop young players and they need to get draft picks so I think Tyus Jones is instantly going to become a, a top trade candidate for a lot of these teams that could use a boost in their either their bench point guard or even if they want to throw him in the starting lineup and and let and run two guard lineups like I really think he's going to be someone that these teams should target so the Wizards makes perfect sense why they would do it next up Memphis Grizzlies they get Marcus Smart they now have the last two defensive players of the year in Marcus Smart and Jaron Jackson Jr. They are going to be absolute hell on defense, especially without Ja for the first few weeks. That, I will say, offensively, Marcus Smart probably never seen a green light like this in his life. That man is going to be launching shots. But that that team, when you're running Steven Adams, Triple J, Desmond Bain, Marcus Smart, and then whoever they want to put at the three... That's going to be a defensive nightmare for a lot of teams. And that fits probably their biggest issue. Like Marcus Smart really fits two of the biggest issues that this team has. 
and that is perimeter defense. Yes, everyone liked to say Dylan Brooks was was a hack or he was all talk. He was a good defender uh, most of the time when his mouth didn't get him into trouble. But Marcus Smart is a clear upgrade at basically every aspect of defense. So I understand the Grizzlies wanting it from an on-court perspective, but also he was the heart and soul of that Celtics team. I don't think he's going to let like that type of stuff slide in the Memphis locker room. There were multiple times and multiple reports all throughout last season where everyone was kind of like, yeah, the Grizzlies need another adult in the room. Well, good news. They got Marcus Smart now, and that dude is probably not going to take anything. He's going to come in there and likely have, you know, set the example for all of them to follow. He's a great person to have in leadership. And I know the issue everyone liked to say about him in Boston being like the heart and soul and being that one to talk was that, you know, he was the third best player on the team. But that experience and his his experience and his leadership and him being a mentor to those those Grizzlies players, if there was ever a chance for this Grizzlies organization and for Ja and everybody to turn it around, bringing Marcus Smart is probably the best way to do it. So I definitely understand this for the Grizzlies. I can't believe that, that, that this is that. Like, what a development. I, I truly cannot believe that... They, uh, they turned, they upgraded Dylan Brooks into Marcus Smart himself. Like, unbelievable. I'm going to need days to recover from this. But for Boston, they bring in Chris Tapps Porzingis, and they also get those two first-round picks. And in a vacuum, two first-round picks and a, and a top-tier big man in the league. Um, I understand it. I understand it on paper. I understand team needs i understand there was a redundancy at the guard position with Derek white marcus smart and malcolm brogdon i understand they probably wanted to get off of malcolm brogdon but then when the clippers come out and say we don't like how his injury looks probably scares other teams off of him which is unfortunate they must have just really wanted porzingis here like he opts into a 36 million dollar uh, contract this upcoming season they will no doubt get to work on an extension with him uh f- great if he stays healthy i think last year was a uh perfect optimum chris Tapps porzingis season like he stayed healthy for the most part he played great and you saw what he could be at his absolute apex now what the Celtics were trying to do with Malcolm Brogdon, who just won sixth man of the year, they're trying to sell high. Like, let's be real. He's had injury issues his entire career as well, and he played great. He won sixth man of the year, and the Celtics were probably about ready to be like, cool, we, we've we got his value up to where we need it. Let's go make a trade. And it kind of feels like they walked into the Wizards doing the same exact thing. The Wizards were like, hey, Porzingis can opt in to his $36 million deal uh we got really lucky last year and we still missed the playoffs like Porzingis played out of his mind but Bradley Beal missed a ton of games and we still missed the playoffs so we're gonna just clean house and trade everybody and Boston has needed that type of big man that can stretch the court a little bit more consistently than Al Horford um they've needed that for a long time but Porzingis the issue that I have with all of this and this isn't even as someone who is not a Celtics fan the issue here is if Porzingis is out at the three-point line and Horford is out at the three-point line or inside in the paint, like in that arc area in the paint for those like 10 to 12-foot mid-range, who is grabbing rebounds for this team? Like Porzingis, for all his size and all his skill and ability, he's not a double-digit rebound guy. Like I think the rebounding is the biggest issue that the Celtics have. That's why Robert Williams is so important is because he can get in and get those rebounds. Like if I was Boston, I'm not, but if I was running Boston, I would have at least asked Memphis about Steven Adams. There's no way they're trading him with what he means to that team. Clearly from a on court, who would have thought on court impact. And then as well as his off court impact, but you got to ask, like, you need that that type of center that can get in there and get those dirty rebounds and can fight for it and keep possessions alive on the offensive glass. And Porzingis just isn't that type of player. So I understand adding firepower to the team in the front court, but you can have all the firepower you want in the front court if Jalen and Jason aren't hitting 
you're not probably going too far. So I, I understand it because they needed a, another front court player. They needed an, a front court player that can space and shoot and create shots for others and help keep the offense flowing. But I'm shocked they would give up one of, if not their best defender, to go get him and still not address the problem with rebounds. Um, Robert Williams, like I said, just never healthy. So he, if he's their best rebounder, honestly, you could argue Marcus Smart was their best rebounder last season. And he plays, he's at the guard position. Like he's just one of those intuitive players. So the other part for the Celtics, and I, I apologize, I'm trying to go quick here. Um, the other part with the Celtics is who is going to step up and be that leader now? I hope Brad Stevens and management and and Joe Mazzulla and everybody has a pretty clear idea of who is going to fill that void. Because for years, we've heard that Jalen and Jason are not vocal. Uh, is it going to be Porzingis? Is it going to be Al Horford? Is it going to, like, I don't know. Because if it's one of those guys, if it's Al Horford, then it, you're going to fall into the same thing that we heard about Marcus Smart, where it's like, can't be the third best player that is out here talking like a leader to everybody. You need one of the two, like one of the best players needs to step up and assert that control. And it would be nice if it was one of those two guys, Jalen or Jason, especially considering the Celtics were probably about to give Jalen Brown close to like $200 million. But it just is so interesting. Like this feels like the first trade in like a series of trades that are still yet to be made. Uh, I really don't know what to expect. Tomorrow is the draft. I was going to just make a video about the draft and recap that and everything that happened. But, geez, Celtics fans, please let me know in the comments how you are feeling. Uh, I have a lot of Celtics fans in my life. I am a Laker fan, but I will not be laughing at your pain. Uh, Marcus Smart was really important to that team. He was really important to that city. He did a lot of work with, with kids in the city and, and, in particular, children with cancer and in hospitals. He was a great leader in that community. Um, and I think that that is, it's a downer. It's a downer that they would trade him like that because he meant a lot to the team, to the organization, and to the city. He has been there for nine years. He's been there, like, he was there with Rajon Rondo. And he has played, he played nine years with the Celtics. They made the playoffs all nine years. Tons of runs that they've gone on. Those are the finals run, the conference finals runs don't happen without him. So it's a little bit of a bummer to see it happen like this and to see him traded like this uh, in what seems like such a perplexing move. I understand Brad Stevens was probably trying to like compile assets as far as the draft picks over bringing in a player like Porzingis, but still a Porzingis for Marcus Smart one for one trade just does not sound right and it's not going to sit right with Boston fans unless Porzingis comes in and plays at that level that he did last season in Washington if he's there and he's in and out of the lineup and he's banged up and he's you know not playing but maybe he could play but he's opting not to because it's a contract year like that could be a nightmare so I'm really curious to see what else Brad Stevens has up his sleeve because this cannot be it Memphis a plus on the trade, completely understand. Wizards, A on the trade, totally good. Tyus Jones is going to get you a lot. Boston, I'm going to say incomplete because there has to be more to this. Kristaps Porzingis for Marcus Smart is not the only move that you need when you're trying to win a title. So we'll see. We got the draft tomorrow. I'll hop on and do a quick recap of that later on in the evening tomorrow. But yeah, like I said, hit the comments. Let me know your thoughts on this trade. Specifically, if you are a fan of one of these teams. Uh, and, you know, it hurts. Boston fans, I'm sorry. 